Protesters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, a bit earlier at about 7 a.m., a group from the post. Welcome to Hashtag PH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler, Interior Secretary Rojas says the release of the Romualdez video is misleading and malicious. Alleged pork barrel queen Janet Napolis and her husband filed their counter affidavits in a tax evasion case. And U.S. lawmakers reach a two-year budget deal to avoid a new government shutdown. <coughs> Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Interior Secretary Mar Rojas hits the Cloban Mayor Alfred Romualdez for releasing what he called an edited video of a meeting held after Typhoon Yolanda, known internationally as Haiyan. The video was released on social media after an emotional Romualdez said national government refused to take over rescue efforts in Tacloban unless he signed an ordinance to allow it. So, so we just want to legalize this. Now, if, 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 if it's not legalized, then, then okay, you're in charge and we have you. And that's it. Hey, but I'm not going to do it. Romualdez is a relative of former First Lady Imelda Romualdez Marcos, whose husband jailed the father of President Benigno Aquino. In a press conference, Rojas says he only wanted to clarify the division of work between the national government and local officials to avoid finger-pointing. Rojas adds, huge chunks of the conversation were removed on purpose. This malicious video was released to cover up Romualdez's own mistakes. Rojas says Aquino is careful about being misconstrued because people might think politics was involved in post-typhoon efforts. The government drew criticism for slow relief operations in the hours immediately after the typhoon, but Rojas blames it on local governments who failed to explain what they needed from national government. The conflict between Rojas and Romualdez is the latest in a growing list of squabbles between national and local government over typhoon relief efforts. Aquino and Romualdez traded accusations after the president said that the Cloban government did not prepare for the typhoon. Alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Napolis and her husband Jaime submit their counter affidavit more than two months after the Bureau of Internal Revenue, or BIR, filed tax evasion charges against them. The BIR says Napolis's liability stands at 44.68 million pesos, while Jaime's liability is at 16.43 million. BIR Commissioner Kim Enares earlier said the couple failed to file proper income taxes based on their properties and investments under their names. The Rappler report, based on the financial declarations of Napolis' registered business, shows these earned less than a million pesos a year. Napolis' daughter, Jean, also faces charges for failing to pay taxes worth 32 million pesos for the multi-million peso properties listed under her name. Napolis' wealth came under closer scrutiny after netizens discovered Jean's posts on social media detailing her lavish lifestyle. A report says the U.S. Internal Revenue Service is running after Filipino boxer Manny Pacquiao for unpaid taxes amounting to 18.3 million U.S. dollars or over 770 million pesos. Celebrity news website TMZ says it obtained documents showing Pacquiao's camp failed to settle tax obligations in the U.S. despite a statement by Pacquiao's promoter Bob Arum that these have been paid. The report does not include the 2.2 billion pesos or 50 million dollars that the Philippines BIR or Bureau of Internal Revenue is seeking from him for 2009 and 2010. But Pacquiao's financial advisor Mike Conk says the 18 million dollars sought by the IRS is for the deductions it reportedly didn't allow. After his win over Brandon Rios in November, Pacquiao complained after the BIR froze his bank accounts in connection with a 2.2 billion peso tax evasion case. The number of unemployed Filipinos drops to 2.6 million in October from 2.76 million a year ago. Based on the latest labor force survey, the unemployment rate is at 6.5 percent, lower than the 6.8 percent recorded in October 2012. The unemployment rate is a key indicator of whether or not economic growth is trickling down. In a statement, National Economic and Development Authority Director General Arsenio Balisacan attributes the decline to robust hiring in the industry and services sectors. 
workers. The Philippines' employment rate rises to 93.5% from 93.2%. There were 37.73 million individuals with jobs in October, higher than last year's figure of 37.67 million. The Department of Energy, or DOE, will look into how Manila Electric Company, or Meralco, computed its power rate increase December. At the hearing of the House Committee on Energy Tuesday, DOE Undersecretary Raul Aguilo says the department will investigate Meralco's 4.15 pesos per kilowatt hour rate hike. Aguilo says the rate increase was much higher than the 1.58 peso per kilowatt hour the department anticipated. Maralco earlier explained the rate increase is because of the maintenance shutdown of the Malampaya Natural Gas Facility and outages of other power plants. On Monday, the Energy Regulatory Commission approved Maralco's plan to implement the rate hike on a staggered basis. U.S. lawmakers reach a two-year budget deal that would avoid a repeat of October's partial government shutdown. U.S. President Barack Obama called the agreement a sign of bipartisan cooperation. It was brokered by Democratic Senator Patty Murray and House Republican Paul Ryan. The new deal sets annual budget caps for the next two years at just over a trillion dollars, partially repeals automatic budget cuts known as sequestration, and provides for about $22 billion in deficit reduction. The deal also avoids another possible shutdown in January when government funding is scheduled to run out following the October deal. Nelson Mandela's flag-draped casket makes its way through the streets of Pretoria Wednesday, arriving at the seat of South Africa's government, where he will lie in state for three days. A black hearse travels through streets lined with flag-waving South Africans, all honoring the late anti-apartheid icon who died at age 95 after a long battle with a respiratory illness. The lying in state is expected to be somber compared to Tuesday's celebratory memorial service in Soweto. Thousands of people attended the event in Soweto's World Cup Stadium, where U.S. President Barack Obama led foreign tributes to Mandela. It also featured a historic moment, a handshake between Obama and Raul Castro, leader of longtime Cold War foe Cuba. For our social media post of the day, U.S. President Barack Obama's grinning selfie with the Danish and British Prime Ministers set social networks abuzz. In a candid moment, Denmark's Hel Thorning Schmidt holds up her smartphone as she and Obama pose for a picture with David Cameron, all three of them smiling broadly in their seats at Soweto's World Cup Stadium. First Lady Michelle Obama, sitting to the left of her husband, does not join them. She keeps her eyes on the ceremony where world leaders pay tribute to South Africa's anti-apartheid hero. The selfie, short for self-portrait, went viral on social media sites, but many question if the moment of mirth was appropriate for the occasion. At Jeffrey Halverson tweeted, there should be a moratorium on selfies during memorials and funerals. No? Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 7, pop megastar Justin Bieber sings Christmas carols and plays basketball with young survivors of Super Typhoon Yolanda in a trip to Tacloban City to boost an international relief effort. The United Nations Children's Fund says the fundraiser would give child survivors access to education, vaccinations, clean water, and sanitation. In a tweet, Bieber calls his performance the last and most important show of his Believe World Tour. At number eight, Myanmar welcomes thousands of athletes Wednesday for the Southeast Asian Games. The opening ceremony is held in a 30,000 capacity stadium in Noi Pi Do. The former Praia Nation last hosted the Games more than four decades ago. The return of the multi-sport event comes as political and economic reforms sweep Myanmar following the dissolution of the ruling junta in 2011. And at number 10, Uruguay legalizes marijuana, becoming the first nation in the world to oversee its production and sale. After a marathon debate, 16 leftist senators out of 29 lawmakers vote in favor of the legislation championed by President Jose Mujica. The law authorizes the production, distribution, and sale of cannabis and allows individuals to grow their own on a small scale, all under state control. Legislation causes unease in neighboring Brazil and Argentina. For the full top 10, visit raptor.com's The Wrap.
Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel, and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page that crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers and viewers the most. These 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. If we take a look today, this has been the running story the last two days. Politics, lack of command, Haung Takloban. Um, this sparked the whole um, the Romualdez testimony against Mar Rojas, 84% angry, 7% annoyed. Interestingly, 2% don't care. And today's Rojas response, Rojas hits Romualdez for malicious video. You have 36% angry, 29% annoyed, 21% happy, and 11% don't care. That don't care is picked up by the story that's gotten the most number of votes today. Interestingly, the new MTRCB info ad and how it makes you feel dirty. You have 47% don't care. That mood, it's, they care enough to click the don't care button. Um, that is the mood of the day. Today, most people don't care. Well, that is Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, December 11, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.